This is the story of Icarus and Daedalus. Brought to you by Ferran, Marco, and me, Nick. So let's get started. In order to get the full story, we have to find out what our characters are like. So let's get an idea of who we're working with. This is Icarus, the son of Daedalus, and one of the main characters in our story. This is Daedalus, a renowned artisan of his time. He was exiled to Crete after pushing his nephew off of a cliff out of jealousy. Next up is Minos, the king of Crete and the son of Europa and Zeus. This is the Minotaur, the son of Minos' wife and a bull. He was held captive in the labyrinth after Minos imprisoned him there. And finally, we have Theseus, the founder of Athens and the slayer of the Minotaur, which we'll see later. Alright, now let's get some background information. In order to understand our myth, we're going to have to understand the myth of Theseus and the Minotaur. When Minos learned that his wife had birthed the Minotaur, he was disgraced and consulted Daedalus to construct an inescapable prison for the beast. So Daedalus built the labyrinth. Each year, Minos would sacrifice Athenian boys and girls to the creature as a sacrifice to Poseidon because his son was assassinated in Athens. When Theseus, the founder and king of Athens, heard the news, he volunteered to slay the Minotaur himself. He sailed to Crete, where the labyrinth was located, and there he met the daughter of Minos, Ariadne, who fell in love with him. Consulted by Daedalus, Ariadne gave Theseus a ball of yarn as a clue and told him how to escape the labyrinth. She told Theseus to take the ball of yarn and tie it to the end of the door, and then always go straight down, never left or right, where he would find the Minotaur. Once he found the beast, Theseus drew a sword that he had kept hidden and slayed the Minotaur. Alright, now that we know the background, we're able to get into our myth. When Minos learned that Daedalus had helped Theseus defeat the Minotaur and escape the labyrinth, he imprisoned Daedalus and Icarus in the labyrinth themselves. In order to escape, Daedalus constructed two pairs of wings for him and his son to fly out of the prison, fashioning the wings out of wax and feathers that he had found. Daedalus tried the wings first, but before he left, he warned Icarus of complacency and hubris. He told him not to fly too high, or the sun would melt the wax, and not to fly too low, or the sea's dampness would clog the wings. Icarus then took flight, but after experiencing the feeling of flying, he got giddy and flew too high, causing the wax to melt. Without his wings, Icarus fell into the sea that now bears his name, the Icarian Sea, where he met his fate by drowning. When it came to choosing a logo for our myth, we chose the image of Icarus falling due to his wings coming apart. This is because it was a direct result of his hubris and shows how him trying to fly too high ended up killing him. For the tagline, we chose the motto, Curiosity killed the cat, but hubris killed the hero. This is because hubris is the direct demise of Icarus and represents the theme that overconfidence will oftentimes result in failure. Now that we know about the myth itself, Marco and Fran are going to analyze it on a deeper level, using some of the perspectives we learned earlier in the year. The body of the young boy falls into the sea and washes ashore an island in the Aegean Sea. Heracles recognizes the body and thus names the island Icaria and the surrounding sea the Icarian Sea, which still remains a part of the present Aegean Sea surrounding the island of Icaria. The central issue in this myth is the issue of the young Icarus' hubris. This touches on the blame and responsibility aspect of this perspective, but it also addresses the fundamental human problem of hubris and overconfidence that will be discussed later. Metaphysical. This myth displays the mortality of humans as Icarus' own behavior costs him his life. Human life is something that is fragile and can be taken by the slightest mistake. 
It teaches us to be careful with our own actions and decisions. Another, more physical limitation that this myth addresses is the natural domain of man. Through the technological innovation of Daedalus, the two men were able to take flight, as no other man had done before, but their flight ended tragically with his son falling from the sky into the ocean to drown. This shows that a man's natural domain will always be land. No matter how advanced the technology, humans are meant to inhabit solid ground. Historical This myth builds off the historical context of the myth of Theseus and verifies the cruel rule of King Minos and his Cretan labyrinth. Hubris is defined as extreme self-confidence or pride. In respect to this myth, Icarus's demise can be attributed to his hubris. As he became more and more confident in his flying abilities, he dismissed his father's warnings. In Greek mythology, when hubris is committed and offends the gods, it is often punished. In Icarus's case, he mimicked the godly power of flight and was punished accordingly. This myth goes to reflect the need for man to test their limit as his confidence increases. It shows that hubris can often cloud judgment, resulting in humans breaking their boundaries. As addressed in the earlier perspective, hubris is one of the human characteristics that appears often in myths. In this case, Icarus became overwhelmed with the thrill of flight and his own overconfidence caused him to dismiss his father's warnings. And that's it. Hopefully you were able to learn something about the myth of Icarus and Daedalus today. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to look them up yourself. I'm done explaining for the day.